Okay, that is the situation in Washington. What about here in Ottawa? What can Canada do to help restore peace and order to Ukraine? Should Russia really be expelled from the G8? In the foyer of the House of Commons, David Anderson, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs is here. Alain Lavergeel is the NDP's Deputy Foreign Affairs Critic, and Ralph Goodale is the Liberal Deputy Leader. Uh, let me start with you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, the Foreign Affairs Minister, John Baird, on the program, comparing this to 1938, uh, the Sudetenland and Czechoslovakia, uh, where the Germans took that over. Clearly, uh, one of the lessons of history that some people take from that is do not appease and by that that means military action uh, what is Canada's position now how far is Canada prepared to go to make sure that Russia uh, respects the territorial integrity of Ukraine well Evan to address your first question I think uh, today we had a very interesting uh, committee meeting and one of the things we heard that Russian does, Russia does not have this excuse uh, that this is a language issue at all. Uh, we, we were told the committee that the biggest threat to a Russian speaking population in Ukraine uh, is the are the Russian soldiers that, um, that may or may not be uh, coming onto the ground there so uh, we believe that uh, and we're actually told there's there's uh, both a positive and negative side of of our involvement here. Uh, one of the first things we were, we were told is that we should um, urge the Ukrainian government not to uh, be provoked, that they need to avoid provocation because the Russians will try to use that as they have done other places in order to, uh, to begin to stir the, this pot. Um, the second thing is that uh, the Canadian government on the positive side can work very strenuously to support the, the new government in Ukraine and uh, John Baird was there last week, that was a very important step but we need to continue to work with them to provide them with the, the institutional strength that they need to, to have in order to deal with this crisis and then on the, if you want to call it the negative side of that equation we need to deal uh, strongly with Russia, uh, speak out strongly against the, the illegitimate acts that they've uh, been and moving ahead with, suspending the Russia? G8s, well suspending the G8 uh, preparations uh, recalling our ambassador, uh, we're moving on these things and certainly uh, we want this to stop as quickly as possible. We continue to discuss these issues with our multilateral partners and we will be moving together with them. Alain Levalgeri, I know the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee met today on the issues of Ukraine. Uh, you heard from uh, experts in the Ukrainian community. What, what's your take? Can Canada do more? Are you satisfied currently with what Canada has done? Well, I, I think that whatever Canada decides to do, uh, we need to do it with our partners. I mean, it's, which doesn't mean we need to wait to see what others are doing and, and, and then do the same thing. We, we, we need to work with our partners, and, and I understand Prime Minister Harper spoke to quite a few of our key, to a few of our key allies. So we need, no, no country can take action alone or it's not very useful. We need to work with our partners in multilateral what does that fora. Mean? Okay, so. and, and, and identify, at the committee this afternoon, we heard about 15 or 20 different suggestions of actions that could be taken, including economic sanctions, visa ban, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, there was an old whole panoply, sorry for the French word, but uh, you know, wrote a whole series of suggested actions. Uh, the important thing is to, to work with uh, like-minded and, and to act in a okay, but, co comprehensive way. Okay, so I mean, I know, I, listen, I, I understand everyone, but work with like-minded and act in a comprehensive way. I'm, I'm trying to get some details. The Russian ambassador to the UN, Vitaly Cherkin, Mr. Goodell, said that, and he's former ambassador here, mm -hmm. said that Ukraine's president, Viktor Yanukovych, asked President Putin to use Russia's army to restore law and order. They have called this an illegitimate coup d'etat. Uh, they're trying to lend legitimacy to their actions in Crimea and possibly further actions. What do you make of Russia's justification? Well, they're trying to paper over uh, some very bad behavior. Uh, there, there can be no justification uh, under international law for the way the, uh, uh, the Russians have behaved uh, in the last period of time. Uh, they've clearly stepped over the line. Uh, there is not a justification for uh, their, their invasion uh, to this point, and, uh, and, and they, need to, they need to back off and back down. And we all need to work together uh, to, uh, to make sure that that is the direction mm -hmm. of this evolution of events, and it doesn't suddenly go in the, in the other direction. When, I they think say, one, one when they say, I just want to get, when they say there was free and fair elections, Yanukovych won. Canada sent monitors to those elections. Then he was pushed out. And the Russians say that's a coup. Why they they say why is the West supporting an uprising that pushed out a democratically fair 
uh, well, the, leader the, the, that was under free and fair elections. The, the What's last, the response? The last two sets of, uh, of elections uh, where Canada has sent monitors uh, have in fact revealed uh, a very significant number of irregularities uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the, the legitimacy of, uh, of that protest was very much in question in the minds of a great many uh, uh, Ukrainians who thought that the, the democratic process had been perverted and that, and that human rights and civil rights and the rule of law uh, and freedom and democracy uh, were very much at risk because of the behavior of the, of the Yanukovych uh, regime. Uh, so uh, Russia is trying to uh, concoct an excuse here, but the rest of the world is clearly not buying it. Mm -hmm. I note today, for example, that the Chinese indicated that they support the, the independence of Ukraine, they support the integrity, the territorial integrity of Ukraine and the sovereignty of Ukraine. And I think that's a very interesting opening that uh, the Western world should uh, immediately go to work on in consultation with the Chinese, because quite frankly, their participation in this international dialogue, helping to uh, persuade the Russians that they're over the line and it would be wise for them to withdraw. I think the Chinese could play a very useful role here. Uh, Mr. Anderson, go ahead. I know you wanted to weigh in there because we're all trying to figure out uh, what's next here. Yes, there's been uh, some a actions as to, you know, on behalf of Canada and the West, but the question is, is that enough? I mean, Mr. Putin clearly has something in mind here. He's got lots of military power on the border of Ukraine. Uh, he's got operational control of Crimea. Uh, if this goes further, then what, uh, Mr. Anderson? What is the next move? How does this play out? Well, I think just uh, to uh, back to Ralph's comments, I think when a government is beginning to move against its own citizens and you've got uh, snipers shooting its own citizens down the street, that it loses the legitimacy that it has as a government. There's a new government in Ukraine that has been recognized. Uh, we were there and, and recognized it. And uh, again, I point out that the th these things need to be done as part of an international community. If uh, the international community decides to move on sanctions, they should do that, they should do that as, as a community. If they're going to move to together uh, to provide a financial package, they need to do that as a, as a community as well because the help that Ukraine is going to need is going to be bigger than any one country can provide and certainly these principles of, of rule of law freedom and democracy are, are things what that if the international all the, community the, 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 decided they, on military action though I mean would, I mean this this could happen and you certainly have to put that on the table if there are in fact Russian military uh, maneuvers going on if this is as John Baird has called it quote an invasion would Canada put military uh, response on the table. Well, I'm not speculating on that because we're talking about dealing with our international community working together. We're not talking about our, ourselves doing the kinds of things that you're talking about. We, an, we uh, anticipate and hope that uh, Mr. Putin will realize that this, the international pressure on him uh, is something that he needs to pay attention to. He can't risk being an international pariah by, uh, by acting here against the, the uh, combined will of the international community. And we're uh, in nice. favor of sending inter, uh, de, um, um, international observers in there, deploying them as quickly as possible as well and uh, trying to make sure that there's stability maintained on the ground and I think that uh, you know for Russia to say okay. that there's there's uh, instability in the country the only instability in the Ukraine right now is being caused by them I unfortunately I know there'll be lots of time to have this discussion we're literally at the end of our program so I had to squeeze this debate in David Anderson Ellen Lever, Jaron Ralph Goodell I always appreciate the three of you coming on mm -hmm. uh, there'll be lots more to talk about Ukraine as we watch the situation uh, coming up does Canada have a responsibility to protect Ukraine the results of your ballot box next. Stay with us.